you are using your credit card wrong. And that could potentially be costing you hundreds, thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of dollars. And that's why in today's video, I'm going to reveal the top six mistakes I see beginners making with credit cards, all in the hope of helping you avoid them. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is John of John's Finance Tips. I'm the guy who's had well over 50 credit cards and millions more of miles and points. One, so that you don't have to, and two, so that I can teach you everything I know about the credit card game so that one day potentially you could be traveling for free or sitting in the front of the plane. And in order to do that, you must avoid these top six common mistakes I see all beginners make when it comes to credit cards. The list isn't in any particular order. However, the last point is the one that's going to save you hundreds, thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of dollars. So be sure to stick around till that. Mistake number one, carrying a credit card balance. What exactly does that mean? So when you get a credit card, you need to understand that that is borrowed money. Specifically, it's an unsecured short-term loan, meaning at the end of every single statement cycle, you need to pay back the bank or you're gonna get charged interest. However, some people get a credit card and they think, oh, I've got a thousand dollar credit limit. I'm just gonna use some of the money and I'm not gonna pay all of it off. I'll pay some of it off and I will carry the balance over onto the next statement cycle, thinking that they're just going to pay it off at a different date. So they keep kicking the can further and further down the road by carrying the balance month over month over month. But some of you might be wondering, why is that a bad thing? One, credit card interest is absolutely unnecessary. It's one of those things, unlike an auto loan or home loan where most people are going to finance, nobody needs credit card interest, AKA nobody needs credit card debt. And credit card debt slash the interest rates are some of the highest 15 20 25 percent that is absolutely insane if i came to you and said hey i've got an investment opportunity that can guarantee a 20 percent return every single year you would literally think i was running a ponzi scheme but yet there are folks who are okay with paying a credit card company 20 percent interest do not be okay with that because the minute that you start paying a credit card interest, one, you're paying for my free vacation and everyone else's free vacation because largely that's how banks make a good chunk of their money is through folks who are going to carry interest every single month. And keep in mind, credit card debt is really crippling because then you might get into a cycle of, okay, I carry a balance on this card and another card and another card. And suddenly you've got a bunch of different balances accruing 15, 20, 25% plus interest. That's a slippery slope. Do not go down that path. If you wanna do what we do in this game, the most important thing is to never carry a balance. It's to understand that all you're doing with a credit card is you are borrowing money from the bank and you're going to pay it in full before the due date. So you pay no interest on that because that's how you win the game. The minute you start paying interest, sadly, you've lost. So what you should do instead, pay in full. If you can set up automated payments in full so that you just don't forget and make sure that you're never spending money you don't have. You have a thousand dollar credit limit, you better have a thousand dollars in the bank to pay that credit limit. If you have a $20,000 credit limit, you better have $20,000 if you're going to spend the entire credit limit. Mistake two, making minimum payment. What is it? This is one I see common because it's really easy to fall into this mistake. You get your new shiny credit card, you've been using it, and the bill comes, and it just says you can make a statement balance payment, which is a big number, or you could just make a minimum payment. And sometimes that's $20, $30, $35. And the next month, you just make the minimum payment all the while thinking that, hey, I'm paying my credit card bill, I should be good. And that's exactly what the credit card companies want you to think, that you're good. The truth is though, you're not good. Here's why it's bad. It ties very closely to the first point of carrying a balance. When you only make a minimum payment, you're not paying the entire thing, which means the rest of that balance is going to be subject to interest. Remember earlier we said interest is absolutely crippling on credit cards and it's also just unnecessary. So when you charge off $500 and they say you can make a minimum payment of $35, don't just make the minimum payment, pay the full amount because if you just make the minimum payment, you're gonna pay interest and suddenly you're gonna end up in credit card debt, you end up in credit card debt, you're paying for my free vacations, don't pay for my free vacations, pay for your own. To avoid this, do this instead. Set up an automated payment and instead of clicking make minimum payment, make sure you're paying the full statement balance. My overall tip for anything payment related is try to automate as much of it as possible, but also be sure to only spend what you have. I always see people fall into the trap of telling their friends that they've got a $30,000 credit limit. But that doesn't really mean anything. It just means that the bank thinks that you're worth it for $30,000. Should you just spend 30? 
No, if you need to, sure, but you shouldn't just say, okay, I've got 10, I've got 20, I've got $30,000 credit limit, I'm gonna spend at that amount. Because that is the quickest way to land yourself in credit card debt. And the minute you're in credit card debt, that is a slippery slope down. So avoid that at all costs, folks. Automate your payments and make sure you're paying the full statement balance every single month. Mistake number three, using your credit limit. I know, you're probably thinking, dude, I just got a credit card, I can't even use it? Okay, more specifically, using a lot of your available credit limit. So what exactly does this mean? Let's say you get that new credit card, $1,000 credit limit. You swipe $1,000 on it. You have every intention of paying that thing off on the due date. And so the due date comes and you pay it off. But between the day that you swiped it and when you paid it off, your credit score actually suffered because you had 100% utilization. Let's quickly level set to understand why that's important. Your credit score has five key components. Component number two, which is very important, it accounts for 30% of your credit score, and that is your credit utilization. How much of your available credit are you using relative to how much credit you have? So if you have a $1,000 credit limit and you use $1,000 of it, that is a 100% utilization. In the world of credit cards, banks and other lenders like to see a utilization of under 30% because the more credit you use, the risky you are. I don't think that's the case, but they think that's the case. And so the risky you are, they're just gonna ding your credit score. So what should you do instead? One, be aware of when exactly your statement close date is. I have a full video on it up here I can link, but the TLDR is when you use a credit card, let's say on day one, you swipe $1,000. Day 28 or 30, your statement cycle closes, but your due date is not for another 20 to 30 days after the statement cycle close date. But the statement cycle close date is the date that the bank is gonna send to the credit bureaus how much of your credit you're using. So even though you're using 100% of it, and even though you have intentions of paying it all off for a period of 20 to 30 days, all the other lenders see is, wow, you're using all of your credit. That is like red alarm flags. That is bad. Ding your credit score. So be cautious of when your statement close date is and try to pay off before that. Point number two, just because you have a $1,000 credit limit, just because you have a $10,000 credit limit, do not use all of it. Because the more you use, the more it's going to hurt your credit score. You're probably also thinking, oh, I just got my first credit card and there's a $200 credit limit. That's it. That's exactly what it is, it's a $200 credit limit. Try to either use it and pay it off immediately or minimize how much you're using in totality because the name of the game is get your first card, to get your second, to get your third. Even though your credit limit might be really small upfront, that's fine. At some point, you're gonna be able to upgrade. Don't get too frustrated with this, but also just understand exactly how using a high credit limit can negatively impact your credit score. And my recommendation, don't use as much of the credit limit or pay off as much of it before the statement close date as possible. Mistake number four, getting a cash advance. What is it? It's basically borrowing money from your credit card. You're getting cash out of your credit card. Folks, credit card, is not a debit card. Even though you should be using a debit card in that you turn off and pay it off, do not pull cash from your credit card. That interest rate will eat you alive. A cash advance should never be used unless it's an emergency of all emergencies and you absolutely needed cash. There is no situation in your day-to-day -day life in which you should be taking a cash advance from your credit card. So how do you avoid it? Don't do it. There is no alternative to a cash advance. If you do not have the cash and it's not an emergency, you should not be spending for whatever the item or service is. Mistake number five, not using your credit card. This one is one I see a little later in people's credit histories where they have had old credit cards, they have forgotten about them, or maybe their oldest credit card ever and they've forgotten about them and they're not using it. The reason this is an issue is one, you're showing zero utilization. And when you show a bank that you're not utilizing your credit card, that actually doesn't help you. It doesn't hurt you, but it's not really helping you because, well, how do we know if you're responsible if you never use the card? And the second one is, if you don't use a credit card for long enough, they will just close it. And when they close it, and if it's your oldest card, that can actually impact your credit score from a length of credit history perspective. Length of credit history accounts for 15% of your overall credit score. So I would recommend you do this instead. Old cards that you don't usually use day to day because it's not driving value, take them and use them as like a $1 load to Amazon every month. So you just take it, automatic load, a dollar or $2 onto an Amazon account because sadly I'm sure you'll spend more than that every single month on Amazon so that that card is used month over month. In addition to that, set up an auto payment so that every single month that that full statement is paid. So that's fully automated. That card is gonna sit there and help boost your credit score and you don't have to think about it. 
because you don't want to end up in a situation that I ended up in where one of my old cards, I just forgot about it, completely forgot about it. And that suddenly I get a notice from Captain One saying, hey, we're going to close your old card if you don't do anything soon. Luckily, I went back in there, swiped it, we're good to go. But keep in mind, folks, when you get a credit card, you still need to use it and make sure that you don't have 0% utilization, have the utilization at 1% or 2%. And I do want to clarify, when I say one or 2% utilization, I do not mean carry a balance. I mean, at that statement close date, have some utilization, but before the due date, pay the entire thing off. All right. So statement close date, leave a little bit of a balance, due date, entire thing is paid off. Mistake number six. And this is one that could potentially be costing you hundreds, thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of dollars. And that is using the wrong type of credit card. And this is something I see happen time and time again. The first example is somebody who is just out of high school or just out of college. They have a checking account and the bank says, hey, you've got a checking account with us? Why don't you open a credit card? And they open a credit card and they think, that's it, I'm good. I've got a credit card, on with my life. Not exactly. The second type of folks I see happening are people who are going out shopping and the sales associates like, hey, why don't you get a credit card? We'll take off 10%. Like, oh great, a credit card. Open a credit card and that's the one they use and they never think about it again. That's not the most effective way to do it. And the third type are people who are just seeing that their friends are getting credit cards and so they just jump on one because everyone's getting one and they don't really think why exactly they're getting it. They just know everyone else is getting it. And again, that is also a very ineffective way to do it. The reason all of those situations are bad is that you're not being intentional with how you are getting a credit card. My core teaching on this channel is a credit card is just another tool in your financial tool belt. And it's only as good as your ability to use it. Now, you don't have to do what I do, which is booking trips out 10 months in advance of transferring to the most optimal partner to fly for a $10,000 business class ticket for free. You can, but you don't have to. In fact, you could just get a credit card. Let's say in the next three months, you know you're gonna spend 500 bucks. Well, why not save $200? And if you know that most beginner entry-level credit cards are gonna offer a $200 cashback bonus after spending 500 bucks, then there you go. You optimize for that spend using a sign-up bonus. Now let's say that you know you spend a lot of money on rent every single year, a thousand bucks, two thousand, five thousand dollars. Why don't you instead get a credit card that lets you earn points for rent and cover transaction fee? Built MasterCard. Or let's say you know you spend a ton of money at gas and grocery stores. Why not get a card that gives you 5% cash back for your highest spend category every single month, be it gas or grocery, city custom cash, no annual fee. So my core lesson with the right credit card is you need to be very, very intentional with it. For example, when I first got into credit cards, I desperately wanted to fly first class. I thought it was the coolest thing, but specifically I wanted to do it for free. So I was able to get a Bank of America, Alaska Airlines credit card to earn a Alaska Airlines miles. I was able to then take 70,000 Alaska Airlines miles and book for a Cathay Pacific first class flight that would have cost $20,000, but I paid less than $57 for. In no world should I have ever gotten a Bank of America Alaska Airlines credit card. I don't bank with Bank of America and I do not fly Alaska Airlines, but I had this strategy laid out of if I wanna book for this particular flight, these are the type of points I need. Now, you can find videos all over my channel talking about different ways to use credit cards, my favorite cards and all of that, but my core lesson here is be intentional with the credit card you are using. My second point is don't get attached to a credit card. Just because you have a card for this or card for that, it doesn't mean that it's the best card for that particular situation. And when a better offer comes along, do not be afraid to jump ship. Right now, one of my favorite card offers is from the Capital One Venture X. It's a premium travel card, competes with Chase Sapphire Reserve, competes with American Express Platinum. Love the card. It also pays you five bucks effectively for having the card. This is my number one recommended card because of that offer. Now. The minute, the day that that no longer exists, I'm gonna take a step back and reevaluate. Am I gonna continue recommending that card? Am I gonna continue holding on to that card? But my point is, do not get so attached to a particular card for any reason other than there is value here. The minute there is no value for you, you gotta move on. I see too many people with store credit cards because, well, I got it, it's convenient, it's a credit card. No, that is not the way you should be thinking about it. It is, okay, I got the store credit card to save money, even though I don't think that's the best way, but let's say you did. In a couple months, if you're not continuing to get benefit from the store card, close it, move on to another one. Folks, this has been an incredible video. Hopefully this has been helpful. Let me know in the comment section down below if there are any other mistakes that I should have addressed. And if you have any comments, questions, and if you'd like to support the channel, feel free to check out my affiliate links for all my top card offers, link in bio as well. And I'll catch you all next week. Peace.